With all the talk about increasing global energy consumption and finding a source of power that won't run out like fossil fuels will one day, we've been looking for something both sustainable and powerful for quite a long time. Solar and wind are much discussed options to solve this problem, but simply put, they're just not efficient enough today to address most of our energy needs and traditional nuclear power, which relies on uranium fuel that may be depleted one day as well, also presents the additional problems of radioactive waste and possible meltdowns. Enter fusion power. We've been kicking this idea around for so long that it seems like fusion research is becoming another quest for the fountain of youth. But why is that? Why don't we have it yet? And what is so special about it? Well, what's special is that fusion can produce lots of energy from relatively small amounts of fuel by literally smashing atoms together. Usually these are hydrogen atoms that are well they're, well, they're fused together to make helium, the same stuff you find in balloons. Well, hold on a second, Linus. I took grade 11 chemistry. Look at the mass of a helium atom. It's lower than the two hydrogen isotopes that smashed together to produce it. Well, it turns out that this missing mass was converted to energy during the fusion process because of differences in how strongly the protons and neutrons that make up hydrogen and helium stick to each other and a very small amount of mass is equal to a huge amount of energy. You know, that famous equation that people spout out whenever they want to look really smart. What that means is that fusion is extremely powerful, even more than conventional nuclear fission, which splits atoms instead of smashing them together. And because the only byproduct is helium, we'd be rid of the carbon emissions from burning fossil fuels, and you wouldn't even have to worry about radiation presenting an environmental hazard. Well, cool then. So why don't we just get a bunch of hydrogen and start like smashing atoms? The special isotope of hydrogen that we need for fusion called deuterium is abundant in the oceans and could meet our energy needs for millions of years. So it's not like we don't have enough fuel. Well, there are other problems. Aside from the obligatory funding issues and political wrangling that come with any major scientific endeavor, one major issue is that you need lots of energy to start a fusion reaction in the first place. Our own sun is a natural fusion reactor. In fact, hydrogen fusion has kept it burning for billions of years and will keep it burning for billions more. But the sun can only do this naturally because it's so large. The intense gravity at its core creates temperatures of millions of degrees. That, both smart guy, it's hot enough to make the atoms fuse, don't worry about it. But here on Earth, creating those kinds of conditions is much more difficult. Right now, there are experimental fusion reactors that do work, but because we have to heat deuterium to such high temperatures, they require more power to be put into them than they actually generate, like trying to charge a solar flashlight with another flashlight. The other big issue is how to keep a fusion reaction going once you've started it. You need to create enough excess energy with your initial reaction to cause other atoms to fuse. Not to mention that you then need a way to contain that reaction. Not only to keep it dense enough to keep temperatures up, but also because you don't want a hydrogen plasma heated to millions of degrees hitting the walls of the reactor for what I think should be fairly obvious reasons. A very strong magnetic field is one possible solution to the containment problem, which is being used in one of the newest experimental fusion reactors located in Germany. German engineering, am I right? Whose next goal is to keep a reaction going for a mere 30 minutes to see if sustainable fusion is something that's even feasible down the line. So we're still a ways away from seemingly limitless clean energy, but we are starting to see the possibility that fusion could be the solution to a future energy crisis. That is assuming, of course, that Doc Ock doesn't come along and steal it for his evil lair. I can't come up with a transition for this, so Tunnel Bear! Yeah, that's right, Tunnel Bear. Tunnel Bear is the VPN that lets you tunnel to 20 different countries, allowing you to browse the internet and use online services as though you are in one of those countries. Which sounds great, but it's not the best part. The best part is Tunnel Bear is easy to use. They have apps for iOS, Android, PC, and Mac. They also have a Chrome extension. And all you gotta do is choose a country in the app, 
turn Tunnel Bear on and watch as your bear tunnels your internet connection to a new location. You don't actually watch anything. There wouldn't be time to watch it. It's just, it like, turns on in like a couple of seconds. Anyway, once it's on, your connection gets encrypted and your public IP address gets switched and that's it. You bypass all those annoying details like uh, port configurations, DNS, any router settings, anything like that. Tunnel Bear handles it all in the background. They've got a top rated privacy policy and if you're not sure if Tunnel Bear is right for you, you can try it out for free with 500 megs of data and no credit card required. Then if you decide you like it and you want to upgrade to unlimited data, you can save 10% by going to tunnelbear.com slash Linus, linked in the video description. Thanks for watching. Like if you liked, dislike if you disliked, look at our other channels, leave a comment with future suggestions for videos that you want to see, and subscribe and follow and all that good stuff.